I saw this little black thing in my coffee and I went to go grab it and then it sank. And now I have no idea what it was. <sighs> Still good. <laughs> Uh, a little callback to the old days of YouTube, which is basically what this video is going to be. It's like a classic clothing haul, no crazy edits, like what I used to do when I first started this channel back in 2012. Back to the basics, which is what I actually plan on calling the next series. Back to the basics, back to basics, back to basic, basically. I like to create cool content, but sometimes I just want to sit down and talk. So for the first piece, this Bone Thugs and Harmony tee from the last video, which will of course be on the iCard up above. I wanted this tee because I've always been a fan of Bone Thugs. My first CD ever, yes, my first compact disc was actually a Bone Thugs and Harmony CD. I don't really want to say album because it was a single and it was... <laughs> that was actually gifted to me from my brother who has passed away as a lot of you guys may know My brother is not the one that put me on to Bone Thugs and Harmony though. It's actually my uncle Desi He used to always roll around in lowriders and play Bone Thugs and Harmony And so that's kind of the reason why I've always liked them It was actually originally owned by someone who used to be friends with my brother. He sold to someone else I tried getting off them. They never wanted to get rid of it up until recently And then of course my good friend RJ got it and then of course gave it to me. Shout out to RJ man But anyways, as you guys can see I got a bunch of personal pieces so I'm going to briefly touch on each attachment and also as you guys know anytime we add something to the personal collection we must also take something away if you add it you must take it so I have taken away over 20 t-shirts from my personal collection that I will be selling on whatnot at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow Thursday the date will be somewhere up here and all of the auctions will start off at one dollar trust me there are a lot of pieces in here I do not want to say goodbye to you have the Magic Johnson Chicago Bulls the American Thunder this beautiful Bart Simpson even a couple vintage Supreme tees we got this gorgeous so gorgeous, I think I just said it with a K. Gorgeous Marilyn Manson, as seen on Lil Uzi. Sex is dead on the back. A vintage single stiatch bitch skateboards tee. This t-shirt right here is currently in purgatory. I may get rid of this one, but I just think it's so hilarious. I'm not gonna explain why it's hilarious. If you know, you know, if you don't, you never will. But yeah, all of those are gonna be auctioned off on Whatnot tomorrow, Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, starting off at a dollar. Whatnot's basically a live streaming platform that allows people to go live, except they have a commerce store kind of integrated into the live stream, which is really cool because it actually allows me to discuss the pieces and talk about them as people are bidding. I think it's better seeing a piece live, seeing how it moves, seeing how it fits, as opposed to just seeing a still image. And I know some people are watching this right now and they're gonna be like, oh, it's just a spot. Sponsor. Just to be clear, I reached out to Whatnot. That's why a lot of the referral invites that you guys see are a $10 referral sign up credit. However, if you click my link in the top link of the description, you will get a $15 credit towards your first purchase. That was something that I specifically asked for because I knew I was going to be using Whatnot on my upcoming trip. Oh, and we're not just doing t shirts, I'm also going to be getting rid of some of my favorite jackets as well. Now, moving on to the next piece. These are actually two pieces that I got from the flea market this weekend that I originally planned on including in this video, but I already sold most of the stuff that I got from the flea market on whatnot yesterday. I spent this much, I made this much, I still have this many tees available, and I also need to make some extra subtractions from things that I did not subtract from the last turning clothes into cash video. Here is the total for the upcoming trip. Now that that's taken care of, we do have some pieces that we have added to the personal collection. First up, this beautiful Metallica tee. The fade on this is crazy. The fit is absolutely scrumptious. It says, don't tread on me. Metallica across the chesticles. And then on the back, you have the thumbprint. Touch me again for the words that you'll hear evermore. Don't tread on me. Single stiatch, beautiful fade. A little bit of distressing around the armpit for some breathability. Some beautiful distressing around the collar. The collar could use a little bit of shrinkage, but overall, fits great. Love this piece. I actually used to listen to Metallica as a kid, and the song that I listen to most from them is probably probably not one of their most popular. It's I Disappear it's from the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. Hey, 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 hey. Now, a band that I was a huge fan of and still am today, 
corn. I've been wanting this tee for a while, but I could never find one that was a little bit shorter in the body. I was a big fan of corn back in the day. Jonathan Davis is the GOAT. For those of you guys that don't know, Jonathan Davis is the lead singer of corn. And uh, this is a 2004. My two favorite albums are probably Fall the Leader or Take a Look in the Mirror. And even though this will probably be an unpopular opinion if you are a fan of corn yourself, but I personally would probably pick take a look in the mirror. I just have more of a personal attachment to that album. Now this next piece I've actually had for quite some time. Yes, the absolutely gorgeous Soundgarden tee. Beautiful length, it could be maybe like an inch longer, but I prefer a shorter length in the body because as you guys know, I am short statured myself. Soundgarden is actually from Seattle, which is one of the reasons why I wanted a Soundgarden piece. Uh, I actually did not grow up listening to Soundgarden. I started off listening to rap music for most of my youth because I was heavily influenced by my uncles and my my brother. However, when I started listening to rock music, I was actually listening to Audio Slave, which if you guys know, is formed from the lead singer of Soundgarden, Chris Cornell, and some band members from Rage Against the Machine. So Audio Slave is kind of like Soundgarden meets Rage Against the Machine. Amazing band. I love Audio Slave still to this day, but yeah, Soundgarden tee. Absolutely needed it in the collection, especially since they are from the Pacific Northwest. There's a couple other Soundgarden tees I would like to get, but a lot of those tees are just so freaking expensive. I don't remember what I paid for this, but it wasn't cheap. <laughs> I don't mind paying a little bit extra though. If I can get the right tee. I'll even pay more than the market price if it fits me right. I think people underestimate that. When it comes to vintage, yeah, there's like a somewhat market price in terms of what it is worth, but I have no problem paying more than what it's worth if it is the perfect fit and perfect fade and just everything is exactly the way I want it because all of those little variables are really hard to get right every single time. For example, I wish this quarantine's wear was a little bit different. The fit is great, but the wear is kind of some minor pilling. Speaking of pilling, this is another tee. I paid, I think, $45 for this. And by the way, I'm not subtracting that from my total because this was purchased a while ago. I just never got around to showing this off. I like the graphic, only the strong survive. 1991, single stitch, of course, on the beautiful Fruit of the Loom. This actually has no story, just sick graphic. <laughs> another one that has no story, Dead Kennedys. I uh, wasn't a big fan of Dead Kennedys. Uh, I like them. I like the genre of music, but I'm not gonna get up here and say that like Dead Kennedys is my favorite or just create some fake childhood memory with a band that I really didn't listen to as a kid. But the fit of this, oh man, it's got your boy looking ripped in this tee. And I like the graphic, I like the colors, I like the fade, and I even like the reminiscent cigarette burns <laughs> on the body. I don't mind wearing a t-shirt that's got holes. I don't really care. Two other recent additions that I just got because I like this World Industries tee. I like that it's kind of got this like little beer logo flip and it's also a World Industries tee. I love World Industries. I love blind skateboards. I've mentioned this before, but I used to draw the characters with my friend Zach in middle school. He was way better at drawing than me and he was actually good. I sucked. And then I got this all over print, little wrap around nature print tee. Not really anything too specific except there was this dude Dude when I lived on 38th and Tyler in the south end of Tacoma. He was a neighbor in our apartment complex and he had this big like white tiger picture in his apartment which I always thought was really sick. But it's not like I have some crazy attachment to white tiger. That's not why I got it. I mostly got it because it's a cool wraparound nature print tee. Beautiful color. Fits good. So I got it. Now a couple other tees. Um, first, no meaning. Just fits me amazing. Makes me look buff. Real buff. Like even more buff than the Dan Kennedy shirt. And it fits a little bit more cropped in the body, although there are some holes in the body. And I will also say it smells really, really bad. I cannot get it out. I don't know what the smell is. I'm pretty sure someone died once they made it over the hill. But there are two other tees that you guys may have seen in recent videos. Both of them might have been from the Penny Challenge, the Seaweed Tee and Pearl Jam. Now, I actually was not aware of Seaweed before getting this t-shirt, but it is a local Tacoma band. I've listened to their discography and I love their music. I actually had it uploaded, ready to go on Thrift Row. I was actually gonna post this thing for like $25 because I wasn't even aware of what it was. And then my bro Isaiah stepped in and said, hey, I think you got something crazy there. Ever since then, I've had quite a few people try to get it off me, but once I went back and listen to them being that they're from my hometown I wanted to keep it and just kind of have it in the collection Pearl Jam is a band that I grew up listening to I love Pearl Jam another absolutely amazing band from the Pacific Northwest and this is arguably one of the best Pearl Jam tees, in my humble opinion. It says Pearl Jam choices got some little bleach stains right here on the front and then on the back it says nine out of ten kids prefer crayons 
to guns. I'm not quite sure if that statistic is correct, but hey, I believe them. I paid probably a little bit more than market or maybe around market for this t-shirt just because it fit good. I love the fade and I actually like the little bleach stains on it. Sometimes if the wear on a t-shirt is good and it looks nice the way it is, then I have no problem. Like I said, I will pay up for a tee. We do have a couple other tees as well. We have uh, this, <laughs> this is tight. The Killer Instinct tee. This one was so sick to me. I paid <laughs> More than what I wanted to for this. I actually paid $300 for this. And the reason that I spent so much is just because it's got a beautiful fit, beautiful fit, it checks all the boxes, and this actually does have some meaning for me. I remember when my uncle Jesse, he stole a Super Nintendo, brought it to my mom's apartment. One of the games that we had was Killer Instinct. The Monster Jam World Tour Tee. Man, I remember going to monster truck shows with my mom. My mom is a self-proclaimed biker. So like, that's a huge thing in that culture. Like monster truck shows were the best when I was a kid. And this is just so sick. I have a Grave Digger shirt as well, but that particular one might get sold on whatnot because I'm currently getting that stretched. I'm not quite sure if I can get it to my preferred measurements. If it does get sold on whatnot, like I said, top link in the description. You may see that on there soon. I didn't want to say this earlier in the video, but I, I genuinely love whatnot. The reason I didn't want to say it earlier in the video because I didn't really want to be in the part where I'm talking about it I figured there's gonna be people that see that part of the video and like don't rock with me and don't watch it this far They'll probably just be like, oh, yeah, it's just a sponsor like any other youtuber I know a lot of youtubers pretend for certain sponsors, but if you guys watch my channel I've done one sponsor in the last year or two. I've genuinely had a lot of fun on whatnot I've been selling on there so much. Reminds me of the old days. If you guys were following Robotus and Poppy back in the day, that's what it feels like. Or back in the day when I used to go on my regular Instagram live and just kick it almost every single night. Of course, if you don't follow my Instagram, the Starlight, T-H-E-S-T-A-R-L-I-F-E. While I'm plugging things, go follow that Instagram, but also go follow my thrift page, Thrift Row, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W, and follow Thrift Row on whatnot, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W, or just if you don't have a whatnot, like I said, top link in the description. Yo, the Mickey's tea. This is so sick. Fine malt liquor with the who wants them on the back single stitch this does fit a little long but i had to keep this man i remember random story time when i was 16 years old uh, i was with my brother and my uncle jesse they lived in these like beat ass apartments across the street from a pressure washer and they got so drunk off mickey's and 211s <laughs> my brother went across the street and we literally pressure washed him <laughs> all right i believe this is the last t-shirt. The Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, if you don't know this band, you may have seen this logo or you may have seen it flipped and used for other things. It's a super popular logo used many times. 1994 and this beautiful creme de la creme or since we're taking it back to the basics today, the Bukaki colorway with the back hit, homie riding the bicycle. Sure, I was wrong. That was actually not the last t-shirt. Uh, I also got this Magic the Gathering tee. 1996 Magic Mirage tee. Now, I used to play Magic the Gathering and I said this in the last video as well, but I was playing Magic the Gathering when Onslaught, I believe, was the newest set out. That's when I stopped. I actually tried playing again, but there were just all these new rules. Uh, I bought some Magic cards in like 2015, 2016. Uh, this is like my third Magic the Gathering vintage tee, and this is probably one of my favorites. I do need to uh, work on reconnecting this tag because it's like barely hanging on there. For me, I've realized as my style has matured and as I've gotten older, I have started to use some of these tees almost like Polaroid pictures. I didn't really grow up with a lot of money, so I don't really have a lot of documentation of my childhood. I think I have maybe like 15 to 20 different pictures with my brother out of my entire life. And there's a lot of things that I want to remember that I don't have a picture for. So it's almost like the t-shirt replaces that picture and serves the same purpose. A lot of these tees, as you guys have seen, as I've talked about throughout this video, have this sort of meaning for me personally, which is why I have some sort of attachment to a lot of them. For example, uh, this most recent Sunday, I went to a Leonard Skinner concert with my mom. And I've always liked Leonard Skinner. I've grew up hearing my mom play Leonard Skinner. My mom actually told me this at the concert, but she used to sing Simple Man to me when I was a young little lad, a baby, freshly out the womb, as they may say. So now it would be cool to find that perfect Leonard Skinner tee that has that fade, that wash, that fit, and just something that I would wear in my rotation to serve as a memory 
for that experience of going to the concert with my mom. These next two tees don't really have that much meaning, but they do kind of reference something for me personally. This got meth tee, I'm not gonna get into too much detail. Shout out to my mom, man. Uh, if you guys watch the videos, you guys may know. My mom knows. It's just a little inside joke between me and her. Also, uh, I got this Godsmack tee, which I don't know if I ever showed this off, but I actually bought this inside the bins. Uh, I remember listening to Godsmack on Funky Monkey 104.9. I don't know if that's still a radio station today, but specifically the song Voodoo. A lot of people and whatnot have been trying to get me to sell this. I may end up selling it on there. Just like I said, these ones don't have as much meaning. The Got Meth Tea is just hilarious, and this one, I just, I mean, I like that song, but I don't have as much of an attachment to it, so that last one might get sold on whatnot. Not every tea needs to have some crazy deep meaning. I mean, all of these, for example, don't ask for Tacoma Brew Best East or West. This is actually uh, Engine House 9, which is a uh, local Tacoma bar. Then you got this one right here, which is hilarious. I also got this just because it's funny. <laughs> this was one I picked up that I really just like the fade, the graphic, the font on the back. I have listened to this band. It's pretty decent. I don't have some strong attachment to it, but it's a super sick tee. I also just love the way this one feels. The Sapient tee, which some of you guys may have seen. I said in the video that a lot of people may not know who this is. This is a rapper that I used to listen to who was a part of a rap conglomerate known as Sand People. We got some crew next. We got this right here, which is a little Harley Davidson flip, but instead of Harley Davidson, it says Operation Iraqi Freedom. As you guys know, I was in the military. I did not serve in Iraq. I did, however, get deployed to Afghanistan. Then we got some essentials. I got this beautiful brown crew neck. I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time on blank essentials. Some of the clean vintage essentials are the best. I was wearing this not too long ago. This does need some work. The pocket's coming undone. You got some little human excrement right there on the front right pocket, but the fit is amazing. This is a little 70s thermal lined hoodie. Some of my favorite vintage blanks are Toltec. So I got this gray Toltec. I'll show you guys how it fits on the screen. Of course, I got these two green Toltecs now. I wanted to keep both these because they're amazing. They're just like a really nice lightweight sweater. This one does fit. However, the arms are a little bit short. And then the other one, this like lighter wash, it doesn't fit. Like I tried to make it work. I kept it in the personal, but it doesn't fit. This will probably end up getting sold on the website. I don't know. People on whatnot have been asking me for essentials, so I might try auctioning this off and seeing if someone wants to take this beauty home. The last of the crew neck sweaters, this all over camouflage. I actually originally got this with the intention to sell, but the fit, oh, it's amazing. Just a perfect boxy fit cropped in the body. So that way I will look a little bit taller in photos. Your boy's always trying to increase the observational height measurement. It does have some uh, distressing around the sleeves, but I don't really care, man. I don't care if it's got holes, distressings. If it looks good, I don't care. And then the last two recent additions, all right? We got some uh, Grimacy or Grimici. The verdict is still out how that is said. But some little hiking pants. These are actually a little bit too big. And by a little bit, I mean, a lot of it. These are a large in women's. I love this brand because uh, they're just super lightweight, super nice hiker pant, and they got this little belt right here, uh, which just makes life easy when you're putting your pants on. And then I just found these actually in the bin, so I paid like $2 for these. Just a nice pair of USA made vintage orange tab Levi's, nice little faded black pair of denim. Uh, they are a little bit tight in the waist, not gonna lie. I'm like a 31, so normally a 32 is perfect. Oh, and then also uh, I bought this. I got this online. Uh, it was shipped from someone in Ukraine, Stussy. You guys know how I love Stussy. I will say the fit of this hat, not my favorite. I don't like how the hat fits my big head, but I love the hat. You got the little Stussy logo on the underbrand, the Stussy Paisley. It says Stussy right here, and it says Peace and Prosperity on the other side. Definitely a sick vintage Stussy hat. Stussy hat's right there. And you can really tell it came from Ukraine. Look at this box. It's got some Ukrainian hieroglyphics on it. That should be everything. Like I said, a lot of these pieces have been pieces that I've been kind of adding to my collection. If you guys watch all the trips to the thrift, you guys may have seen me get some of these. A lot of them were new, but a lot of them I did find while thrifting. This video is a little bit different, a little bit more simple than some of my past videos. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to have a sit down with you, talk about some of these pieces and why I like some of these pieces. If you guys like the edits, the vlog format, do not worry. Don't fret. I am not going to drop one next week because I'm going to spend this next week preparing for my trip. But the week after that, I am hoping to have the first episode of the new series live. And uh, we're going to start 
thrifting state to state. So hey, maybe you'll see me at your local thrift store. If you guys liked the video at any point, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications while you are down there. Or if you are not down there because you're already subscribed, then scroll down a little bit, smash the like button down below, show some love in the comments. All of that interaction and engagement does, of course, help out the channel. Also, like I said, make sure you check out that top link in the description. There will be a link to whatnot. I will be selling some of my personal items from my collection which I'm kind of sad to do, but that'll be tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The date, time, and my whatnot will be on the screen as well, so make sure you check that out. Thank you guys for all the support over the years. Uh, it means the world to me. When I went to that Linda Skinner concert with my mom, it was a cool experience for me, not to mention it was cool being able to hear my mom say that she's proud of me and that she's, you know, happy that she doesn't have to worry about me succeeding or kind of doing something with my life. And I wouldn't have any of the success that I have if it was not for you guys. So thank you so much. I do appreciate you from the top and bottom of my heart. As always, keep living the star life. Peace. And listen